Hey there, YouTube bassists and Dingwall fans. This is John from JohnFoxBass.com, Premium Bass Guitars, the place to get your Dingwall. And I wanted to just uh, answer a question that I get a lot from, from folks. Uh, what does a Dingwall pickup look like inside? Uh, without having to take off your strings and loosen up those, uh, those bolts that hold them in and take a look, um, I'm going to show you what they look like. And it's kind of interesting. It might not be what you'd expect. They look like, uh, I've got some tape on here just to say what it is, but they look like uh, regular you know, soap bar pickups. It's like, hmm, is that a single coil, a double coil? What is that? Well, it's actually a split coil pickup, very much like a P bass. Um, so, and this is a five string pickup. This happens to be an FD3N type of, uh, pickup, an FT3 pickup from, from a Canadian bass, the N for uh, neck position, and you'll see these either in the neck or in the bridge on a three pickup bass, and the B one will be in the middle, just to keep you on your toes. Um, so as you can see, you've got uh, three pole pieces under, uh, on, on one coil, under three of the strings, and then the other coil has got two more pole pieces for the other strings, and with this arrangement, um, the way it goes in the bass, is that the, the two are closer to the neck and therefore the G and the D. And then the three are obviously closer to the bridge for the BEA, or whatever your three low strings are. Um, and these, of course, are neodymium magnets in the FD3. So the FD3, the P-Tone, and the Super Fatty 2 all use neodymium magnets. The FDVs use Alnico magnets, the V for Alnico 5, actually, uh, and uh, the new uh, sp split P pickup for the Super P, the new version, also uses Alnico. The prior generation was uh, neodymium magnets and that, but they just recently switched, and they're, they're both available, at least for the time being. I'm not sure how much longer or if the Neos are going to stay around or what, but anyway. Um, What's interesting, I just, just learned something as I was getting ready to make this video. This is a P-Tone pickup. And uh, if you notice the difference between the P-Tone and the FD3, if you can see it, um, probably can. So on the, on the uh, P-Tone, the G, D, and A are on the coil that's closest to the neck, whereas on the FD3, only the G and D are on that coil. Um, so that gives the A uh, probably a little bit more, um, slightly more bottom, because uh, it's closer, a little bit closer to the neck, right? So less bright on the A string, interesting. Um, what else is different between the pickups? Aside from the, they're all neodymium magnets, um, Probably the, maybe the size of the magnets, the strength of the magnets, I'm not sure. They, they look visually similar to me, um, but the gauge of the wire is going to be different. I know the Super Fatties, I believe, use like 40 gauge wire. I think that's the finest wire, and the others probably are not quite so thin. And um, also the number of windings. Uh, with the fine wire on the Super Fatties, you get more winding, so hence um, hotter signal. Uh, so that's what's happening. That's what the pickups actually look like. And why do they have all these wires coming off of them? There are actually five wires. What's that about? So, well, um, two of them uh, are for one coil, like a plus and minus for one of the coils, a white and green. And then two of them are for the other coil, red and black. So red is plus and green is plus, right? And black and white are minus. And then uh, the other the other wire is the shield that shields the whole thing to keep those nasty neon lights and LED dimmers and all that stuff out of your out of your base signal and keep it clean, right? So it doesn't pick up EMI, electromagnetic interference, or RFI, whatever you want to call it, radio frequency interference. But uh, anyway, if you have series parallel switches on your base, then all these wires go into that toggle switch assembly. And then you get to choose if you want the two coils to be in series or in parallel. What's the difference? Well, in parallel, the frequency response is relatively smooth and flat as you w would expect under a normal 
uh, pickup with a normal pickup. But uh, if you flip it into series mode, then uh, what happens is it sounds louder uh, because what's happening is you've actually increased uh, the impedance by putting the two coils in series. The, it, the coils, the impedance is additive instead of in parallel. Just kind of like combining speakers similarly, right? Um, you put them in series, you increase the impedance of your load on the speakers. Same thing happens on the pickup end. Uh, and that increase in impedance is going to cause a voltage increase um, which is going to cause your signal to be louder. So it sounds like almost maybe about 3 dB louder, which is twice as loud um, to our ear. So if you don't have the series parallel switches, then um, the wires have to be combined. Either red and green go to plus and black and white go to minus, or else um, the black and green, and that's, that's when they're in, the coils are going to be in parallel, or else the black and green are tied together, a plus to a minus, and then you've got your, your red is your hot and your uh, white is your, is your minus or your ground. So in that case, uh, the, the coils are going to be in series, which is going to be that louder position. So that's what's happening uh, with these pickups. So I wanted to get this out there um, so I could refer to this video for folks who are asking, well, what do those things look like and how do those switches work? And I'm going to stop this video and make another video with a Z3 that's got uh, P-Tone in it and uh, some super fatties and series parallel switches. And we'll see what all that does. So thanks for watching and have a great day.